Good morning. It is wonderful to hear those familiar chimes. Uh, I have a few announcements. Okay, just want to remind you, this is from the deacons. The deacons covered still operating every Wednesday from 7 to 8 for those who need or if you know someone that needs some help. And remember that uh, um, when, some, when you tell someone that they need to come here for the services, or if you have to yourself, please bring a valid ID. It helps keep the process running very, very smoothly. And again, I want to extend a special thank you to all the Grove L's that keep Grove looking good and running smoothly during this time of transition for us all. And I pray and I believe that God will continue to bless and guide you. So we're going to start with uh, a hymn. Amazing Grace. begin with the call to worship. It is adapted from Psalm 143 verses 6 through 8. It's in the King, New King James Version. We come to you, O Lord. Hear us as we join our hearts and minds together and praise and worship you. We spread out our hands to you. Our souls long for you like a thirsty land. Answer us fatally, O Lord. Our spirits fail. Do not hide your face from us, lest we be like those who go down into the pit. Cause us to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do we trust. Cause us to know the way in which we should walk, for we lift up our souls to you. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for awakening us this morning and leading us to this time of worship. I pray you turn our ears into willing instruments to hear your word and our hearts into eager receptacles to hold, preserve, and share your guiding word. Amen. A good morning, all you faithful saints of the Lord. I pray that all of you are doing well, staying safe, and I thank you for deciding to be part of our worship. Let us begin with the Old Testament lesson, and I will be reading from Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verses thirteen through fourteen, and I will be reading from the New King James, James Version of the Bible. Listen and hear what God's Word has to say to you. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locust to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by their name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. 
the word of the Lord. And a New Testament lesson will come from the book of Matthews, chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. Listen, hear what God's word has to say to you. And when you pray, you shall not be like hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets and they, where they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the, as the, as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Well, it's been eight weeks that we have preached on the commands of Jesus. And trust me, when I say we have barely scratched the surface, please trust me, there are so many more, many of which you probably are aware of, of and because they're rather apparent. There's also many of those, I call them hidden gems waiting to be discovered by you. There is a catch. You'll have to read your Bible. You need a good starting point? I found a wealth of commands in the 5th, 6th, and 7th chapters of Matthew. That's just for starters. But don't stop there. There's a lot more. Keep reading. There's a lot of Bible to read. Now, the commandment I'll be speaking on this morning was found in the New Testament, reading from the 6th chapter of Matthew. If you will remember, Jesus told us where to pray and where not to pray. Instead of praying where everyone can see and hear you, in the words of Jesus, like the hypocrites, he told us to go to our prayer closets, shut the door and pray to your father. Jesus also told us how and how not to pray. He told us not to use vain repetition, thinking the father will hear them because we use so many words. He gently reminds us that the father knows what we need before we even ask. And then Jesus guides us in the manner in which we are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, that beginning of the prayer, I believe most of us know and probably have known for as long as we can remember. Now, the title of my sermon is The Power of Forgiveness, and it's going to focus on verse 12. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Well, some of us learned... Um, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or as I say, when I'm in my prayer time in my closet, I say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Forgive. Now, according to Webster, it means to give up resentment against or the desire to punish, pardon, or to cancel, such as a debt. I'm going to repeat that again because I want you to remember the definition as Webster said it. Now, to give up resentment against or the desire to punish, to pardon, or to cancel a debt. Forgive. A word so important that Jesus told us to use it in our prayers to our Heavenly Father. And I believe Jesus intended us to say this prayer on a daily basis. Because included in the prayer is giving thanks to God for providing our daily needs of nourishment, 
both physically and spiritually. For I believe one of the daily breads we are thanking God the Father for in this prayer is also a foreshadowing of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And that is something in which Jesus commanded us to do in remembrance of him. Forgive, forgiveness. Some people may ask, why should we? What purpose does it serve? It just appeases the conscience of the guilty ones. You see, the natural reaction for most of us, if something is done that hurts us, is to get even. In one way or another, we're going to get even. That eye for an eye mentality sets it. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that cannot be for Jesus commands us to forgive. And I know that can be extremely hard at times. It brought to my mind the incident that happened in 2006 at the West Nickel Mine Army School in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. A gunman entered the Army School, barricaded himself in it, and after releasing the boys, the two women, one with a child, shot eight of the eight, eight of the 10 young girls he demanded to be left behind. Of the eight, five died. It was a senseless, violent crime committed in the midst of a very peaceful community. A community strongly committed to their faith. And this shocked the world. It shocked the world when they displayed their commitment to their faith when they immediately began their acts and words of forgiveness. As a member of the Brethren was quoted as saying, I don't think there's anyone here that wants to do anything but forgive and not only reach out to those who have suffered a loss in that way, but to reach out to the family of the man who committed these acts. Then a spokesman for the family of the perpetrator said an Amish neighbor comforted them for hours after the shooting. One Amish man held the gunman's sobbing father in his arms for as long as an hour to comfort him. The Amish also set up a charitable fund to help the gunman's widow and children. And about 30 members of the Amish community attended the gunman's funeral. Now, if that's not putting your faith in action, I guess I just don't know what is. It was act of faith out of obedience, even unto death. Personally, I don't know if I could have forgiven so quickly. I believe I would have needed more time. But the Amish community knew. They recognized and displayed to all the world the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness was the start of the healing process for everyone involved the family of the victims, the family of the gunmen. You see, when forgiveness is not given, it should be given from the heart. What is left behind acts like a thief. It is the antithesis, the antithesis of forgive is hate, and that hatred and bitterness can steal from your very soul. It steals your ability or desire to seek the joys found in the promises of God. It steals from our prayer time, our one-on-one -on -one with God. It steals part of our peace. It steals parts of our faith. It steals parts of our hope. It becomes a slow erosion of what we as Christians should hold so dear. Being a good and faithful and faith-filled servant, a light to the world. That's what can be found in the power of forgiveness. I believe one of the most powerful stories in the Bible about forgiveness can be found in the 21st chapter of John, when Jesus appeared to seven apostles at the Sea of Galilee. It is a story of Jesus and how he repaired Simon Peter. This is going to be the third time Jesus has shown himself to his disciples since his resurrection. Well, one day Peter told Thomas and Nathaniel the sons of Zebedee and two others, he was going fishing, and they decided to go with him. After fishing all night, they caught nothing. When morning came, there stood Jesus on the shore, called to them, Children, have you any food? To which they answered, No. 
Jesus then instructed them to cast their nets on the right side, and the net became so full they couldn't even draw it into the boat. They realized it was Jesus calling them. Peter, so excited, jumped into the sea, dragging that net. The boat couldn't get him there fast enough. They dragged the net into, onto the shore, and Jesus told them to bring some fish to cook on the high poles he had going. Peter dragged the net to land and was full of large fish. 153 to be exact. The amazing thing was the net was not broken. Jesus then instructed them to come and eat breakfast. Jesus gave them all bread and fish. It was then that the repairing of Peter began. As it says in John 21st chapter, John verses 15 through 17. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he, had, he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. You have to understand one thing about Peter. He was the outspoken one. The one who told Jesus not to wash his feet. And when Jesus responded that if he didn't let him do that, Peter would have no part of him. What did Peter do? He proclaimed, don't just wash my feet, then, but my hands and my head as well. And this was the same Peter that when time came, he proved to be very human when he denied knowing Jesus three times. Now here was Peter back on his old stomping grounds, doing something he knew he was really good at. Something he had proven to himself he could do really well. He was fishing and he had just dragged on to shore probably the biggest catch he ever had. And Jesus had motioned towards the prize catch Peter had hauled in and laid before him and asked him if he loves me more than these. These beautiful, bountiful, very remarkable fish. And when Peter's, Peter replies yes, Forgiveness and healing began. Jesus gently, lovingly, and quietly told Peter that he wanted him to serve him. He was entrusting his flock to Peter and the responsibility of continuing to preach of the new covenant. Something amazing and beautiful happened there. See, Jesus forgave Peter without ever mentioning the word forgive. He showed it through his love for Peter. We talk about the power of forgiveness. Peter fervently continued his mission to preach the gospel. And as Jesus had told his disciples of their possible fate, if the world hates me, you know that it, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And we know, and Peter knew, what they did to Jesus. And the world did hate Peter. So much so he was crucified for being a follower and a teacher of the ways of Christ. Oh, he has the power of forgiveness to drive a man to do what he's asked to do by Jesus, to follow his command. Now this short journey and exploration into forgiveness is leading to one place and one place only, the cross. After all, as, is, as it is recorded in the book of God's holy word in the 23rd chapter of Luke, 34th verse, some of Jesus' last words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I don't believe Jesus spoke these words just for that time. Was just, they weren't just spoken for those who persecuted him, or not just spoken for those who executed him. I believe he spoke those words asking his father to forgive everyone for their sins, then and now. I believe he was asking his father to forgive all the disciples who had scattered the ones that going got rough. 
He asked for forgiveness for all those who remained silent and did not profess their belief and faith in his teachings. And I believe he was asking for forgiveness for all generations to come until the end of the age. For he knew we are all sinners, always were and always will be. And we must realize the importance of forgiving ourselves. We need to learn to loose the burden of our forgiveness, forgiven sins. In his last moments, he showed us the way to find redemption for our acts, our words, our thoughts. Forgiveness. You can almost hear him saying, I, the perfect one, have asked for forgiveness on your behalf. I have shown you how to ask for forgiveness and how to forgive. So, let us do as Jesus has commanded and forgive and ask for forgiveness of our sins. Now I want to know, how do you measure up when it comes to following the commands of Christ? I decided to give it a little try. Just the commands we've been going over in the last eight weeks. And I came to the conclusion that Jesus was indeed speaking for all of mankind all of all time. And today it may, it may sound like this. Father, forgive them for they don't always remember the sacrifice that was made on their behalf. Father, forgive them for they do not always submit to the prunish shears in order to become more fruitful. Father, forgive them for they do not always love their enemies. Father, forgive them for they do not always come to me and learn from me. Father, forgive them, for they continue to allow their hearts to be troubled. Father, forgive them, for they continue to judge. Father, forgive them, for they show favoritism in their decisions. Father, forgive them, for they have not fully learned the power of forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they are my flock, and they are your children. And we love them dearly. Amen. The, um, the prayers of the people. I had no specific requests for prayers. So, I, but I will begin by praying for the safety and health of everyone during this, this ongoing pandemic not just here in the U.S., but the entire world. And Father, pray that more people will turn to God and put their faith and trust in Him. And there's a prayer for the people of California as they face the worst outbreak of wildfires ever recorded in that region. And Heavenly Father, please hear our collective hearts raised up to you in a joint prayer of thanks for the gift you have given us, your Son perfect one who walked and talked among us to show us the way to live a life that would be pleased in your sight. And please hear us as we follow the commands of your son and pray in the manner he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us into tem lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The caller will be blessing us with him number three fifty four in our hymnal, just as I am. <laughs>
Thank you. As you go forth from here today proudly and boldly preach the gospel. Find comfort knowing that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is with you. Take advantage of those opportunities to tell others about your great and loving triune God. Tell them of the gifts that fill us all with hope, love, joy, and peace. Go forth and exercise the command of Jesus to forgive. And tell others how they too can find rest for their souls when they learn to give and receive forgiveness. Share it all with a sincere heart. Share what the wonderful joy you have discovered in living a life pleasing to God. And don't just use words, live it. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, and let all God's people say, Amen.